So some of the key differences when you start talking about lithium ion battery transportation um, are they're gonna be mainly modal differences. And so what I mean by that is the regulations to ship lithium ion batteries are gonna be different whether you're shipping it by highway, by rail, by aircraft, or by ocean vessel. So there's a whole lot of different regulatory standards out there. Um, IATA is typically used for air transport. You'll see the UN model regulations on the global level. You'll see the IMDG code for international ocean, ocean vessel shipping. Uh, but what you'll notice when you go through those regulations is that the types, quantities, and you know just the amount of batteries that you can ship is gonna be more restrictive when it's going by air transport compared to other transport modes. And that's just a matter, um, a factor of safety inherent safety risk on aircraft. Uh, so there's a whole host of differences uh, based on the modal, modal regulations and how you're actually intending to transport the lithium ion batteries. Some of the best ways that you can stay up to beat on any regulations is being part of organizations. Not everybody's going to have a dangerous goods a consultant in-house that's trained just to do that. Hopefully that you've partnered with a consulting company like HSE or uh, many other great ones that are out there so that you can stay abreast of the regulations, what they are currently and what's coming down the pike. But there's many other organizations you can join like uh, COST, the, the Council on Safe Transportation and Hazardous Articles, uh, DGAC, the Dangerous Good Advisory Council, or even PR BA. Uh, we belong to all three. That's the Professional Rechargeable Battery Association. Um, but knowing the regulations and understanding the effects that they will have on you and your company are paramount. Um, when you know these things, when you have a good consultant or you understand the regulations, it's going to help you with ease understand the transportation of your lithium batteries, both in whatever mode of transportation you need to do because you understand the regulations and it's going to allow you to seamlessly uh, go on with day-to-day -day business without any hiccups. Yeah, keeping up with lithium ion battery transport regulations is uh, sometimes a difficult task. Uh, and the reason being is that the regulations around transport of lithium batteries are still kind of in their infancy. And so they're constantly changing, right? So if you're a company that ships flammable liquids, the limited quantity regulations, the fully regulated uh, shipments, those, you know, compliance wise have been the same for 30, 40 years, you know, the same labels, the same type of packaging. But when you're looking at lithium batteries, um, it's just a different landscape on the regulatory side. So as far as staying compliant, um, you know, the best place to start would likely just be training. Um, there are a lot of different training programs out there in person, e-learning, remote webinars. There's a lot of options for you to get that training because training is not only required for people shipping lithium batteries. It is a DOT and uh, international mandate that people shipping lithium batteries have some level of training, uh, but it also is going to give you a background in terms of here are the appropriate packaging, marking, labeling, and documentation requirements that you need to meet. So if you're looking, um, you know, just starting off in the lithium battery space, uh, step one likely would be to um, go through a, a training certification course to give you that baseline understanding of what is required. And then following up later on by joining various organizations um, is usually a, a best practice. So if we're looking for best place to start, I would look at lithium battery training. There are quite a few risks that can come with uncompliance of uh, improperly packaging your dangerous goods. I think first and foremost is safety. Um, there's precautions that are written into the regulations that are giving you best practices on how to ship your dangerous good material on whatever mode of transport that you want to do. So you want to adhere to that because there has been forethought into shipping these things as safe as possible. Outside of that, there's other ramifications of fines and penalties for somebody that could come in and do an audit, uh, both uh, during transit or on your facility yourself that you don't meet or exceed the regulations as written, it can come with a hefty penalty, uh, which nobody likes to do and can disrupt business. So understanding all of these things and uh, applying them properly will save you time and money. So the primary concern around shipping lithium batteries is thermal runaway, right? So. When you're looking at a thermal runaway process, it's extremely rare, but lithium batteries do have uh, the potential to produce dangerous evolution of heat, fire, projectile, um, as well as toxic and flammable off gas. So compliance to the regulations is meant to reduce the likelihood of a thermal event in transport. So that's why it's necessary that we're following the appropriate classification, packaging, marking, labeling, and documentation procedures. 
However, if you are not following those regulations, there are certainly consequences and those come in two forms. So the first one would just be from traditional either US DOT or international regulatory enforcement. Those found in violation of any regulation, packaging, marking, labeling, documentation, anything related to the regulations um, can be held uh, both civil and criminally responsible. So most cases that you'll have a shipper in violation is gonna result in an, in an enforcement penalty, which is a financial penalty against the company. Um, on the other side, for truly egregious or willful misconduct, there are criminal penalties in the United States as well as other countries. So we have the enforcement side of things. Then the other side that we always need to consider beyond any fine that a government may, uh, may level on you is the liability side. So if you're found to be in compliant or not in, if you're found to be non-compliant to lithium battery packaging, marking, labeling, and documentation procedures, and there is a major incident, um, a fire in transport, um, fire on an aircraft, for example, um, that's something where you're going to have also uh, civil litigation, most likely, that, of course, is going to be on a level way, way higher than most government fines. So when you're looking at the consequences of noncompliance, you would have both traditional enforcement as well as potential um, civil liability issues. So making sure that you properly package, mark, label, and document those lithium battery shipments is absolutely a priority.